Hi. Living a supernatural life. Walking in the footsteps of Jesus. John 14, 12 tells us, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do. And he will do even greater things than these, because I go to the Father. In the powerful true words of Corey Ten Boom, faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable, and receives the impossible. Living a supernatural life, walking in the footsteps of Jesus. Want to know more? Hang around. Welcome, welcome to Lions Raw 38 Ministries. My name is George Magalhães and we are an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. It is our passion, our mission to reignite, equip and release Christ-like disciples both locally and globally. We do that through our itinerant ministry but as well as providing you with resources just like this one to help you, to aid you in your God-given calling. Today we're going to talk about the supernatural, hence our background over there. Beautiful library, looking very supernatural. <laughs> Bringing us to our main verse today, as we heard at the beginning. This time the main verse comes from the message version. John 14 verse 12 in the message version says, The person who trusts me will not only do what I'm doing, but even greater things, because I, on my way to the Father, am giving you the same work to do that I've been doing. Wow, that is very clear. Amen? Amen. Amen. And as usual, I've got this beauty right next to me. It's gorgeous. My wife. <laughs> Mine. Amen. Amen. All right, we're going to talk about the supernatural living in the, the supernatural life. All right, let me first give you a little introduction. So as we had at the beginning, John 14, 12 is our main verse. Mm -hmm. Today's word, we are called to live a supernatural life. Amen. As believers, as Christians, we are called to live a supernatural life just as Jesus did. So following his example of trust, expectation, and his word. By believing in his promises and embracing Holy Spirit's guidance, we can experience God's miraculous power in our daily lives. This study explores these three key elements, three key elements for a supernatural life. Trust, expectation, and God's word. Just as Jesus exemplified and promised we would do the same. So we're going to get right into it. But before we do that, we're going to pray. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, as we are going to get in more into your word right now, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that the words that come out of our mouths, Lord God, are your words, Lord God, and guided by your Holy Spirit, not by our might, not by our power, but through you, Lord. We thank you for those who are hearing, Lord, Lord God. Let it be, Father God, word that falls on ground that are ready, Lord God ready to take hold and, and bring forth fruits, Lord God. We pray against any distraction, Lord God, or against anything that would attempt us from not receiving the blessing you have for us, O oh Lord. And we thank you, Father God, let it be, this, be so here as it is in heaven, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Fire away. Yay. <laughs> right. So we've all been called to live a supernatural life. It's one of my favorite topics among others, favorite topics. Everything about God is favorite for me. Anyway, so the God we serve is a supernatural God. I'm excited, right, um, about the supernatural life, aren't you? Because it's one of the things that we experience daily in our life, right? And, and, and we, all, we all have experienced a supernatural life. Um, the supernatural um, other um, encounter or supernatural um, um, solution from God for our problems. It's 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 who we are and how we've call, been called to live here on earth, a supernatural life. The life of Jesus here on earth showed us that living the supernatural life can be a natural part of our everyday daily lives, right? 
The great news is that we can follow in his footsteps and experience the same, I repeat, the same amazing way of living. It is God's will for us to walk that supernatural life. Jesus taught and walked it. Jesus promised that we would not only do what he did, but even greater things. I mean, that is exciting, right? When we read John chapter 14, verse 12 to 17, we get an understanding on how to live in the supernatural just like Jesus did. Let's read it. All right. So John 14, 12, we're going to start with that verse first. And we're reading from the Amplified Classic Version. I assure you, most solemnly, I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do. And he will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. Wow. I mean, what, what, a, what a statement. What a blessing, isn't it? So living the supernatural life is not difficult. Why is it not difficult? Because we're not relying on ourselves. We are relying on God. Our dependence on God serves as a reminder that we are not the one performing or working out the supernatural. Isn't that even greater? It's not dependent on us. We are merely vessels for it. Let's continue on reading on in um, John chapter 14, verse 13 to 14. All right, John 14, 13 to 14, still reading from the Amplified Classic. And I will do, I myself will grant whatever you ask in my name as presenting all that I am, so that the Father may be glorified and extolled in through the Son. Yes, I will grant, I myself will do for you whatever you shall ask in my name as presenting all that I am. Wow. I mean, this is quite self-explanatory. And how cool is that? The joy we have is that through our, sal um, our salvation in Christ, we are not left without guidance. It's not like here, yeah, you know, you need to do this. You need to do that. You, well, not really need. You need to achieve this, I should say. You need to achieve that. You know what I mean? But you have no guidance how to do it. You won't achieve anything. How great is our God that we are not left without guidance on how to live that supernatural life. It's not like he just did it and he said, look what I've done. You do the same, but you don't have a way to do it, right? What did he do? He sent Holy Spirit to instruct us how to navigate each day, provided we invite him in our love, lives and fellowship with him daily. Now, there is a key point here. We first have to invite God in our life and we have to allow, um, allow ourselves to be in this fellowship time with God, like we've um, teach um, last week. Um, we've got daily because daily communi communication with God is what will bring forth that guidance to life so we know what to do. Now, let's keep on reading. Let's read John chapter 14, verse 15 to 17. All right. John 14, 15 to 17. If you really love me, you will keep, obey my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and stand by, that he may remain with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, welcome and take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know, and recognize him for he lives with you constantly and will be in you wait there so again what did i say before first you have to you have to give your life to christ you you need salvation in order to have the guidance of the supernatural and to walk in the supernatural without salvation it cannot be done because like i said before we are reliant on god i know it sounds like i'm repeating but i want to really make this point um, make us aware of this point before we move into what we are, what else we are moving. Like these verses, but you, which talking to us who, who walk in the salvation of Christ Jesus, but you know and recognize um, him, for he lives with you what constantly. So you having the guidance of the Holy Spirit with us constantly, and will be and and, and is in us constantly talking to with us constantly, right? What a blessing. 
So what a blessing is it to know that living a supernatural life is not is not based on us. It's not about age. So like we've said before, remember, the Holy Spirit is not about little Holy Spirit, big Holy Spirit. It's not about your appearance. Oh, it's not even how much, it's not even about how much you, you know, um, so you're rich, you'll have different Holy Spirit, you're poor, you have different Holy Spirit. No, right? It's not just something we experience in church only, or only in terms of extreme sufferings. That's when God will show up. That's when God will talk to us. No, 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 no. Though it applies for them, it's also something we can embrace in every part of our daily lives. And also in our moments of favor, because favor is supernatural living, is a supernatural life. See, I've discovered, I say it like this, discovered three key elements. I'm not saying this, um, that really, you know, like that, that's it. But it, this is what I've discovered. Three key elements that really resonates with me on my journey of living a supernatural life. It's not limited to, but this is what I've discovered. The first one is? Trust. Second one, expectation. And the third one, God's word. Or in your own way, you can see or you can um, translate trust to faith, mm -hmm. expectation to hope, and God's word to truth. Amen. Faith, hope, and truth. Or trust, expectation, God's word. So we'll break these three sections into three sections. While they aren't, like I said, a complete solution, they reflect what naturally, this is a natural, uh, something that naturally emerges from living a supernatural life. We're going to start our study now. The first one is? Trust. Trust. So if you've listened to our words of encouragement, I mean, throughout our boost and all that, you will have noticed that trust is a reoccurring theme for us. Because it's something we often mention, right? Why? Because we believe that as children of God, understanding the importance of trust is crucial. Without it, we might be blocking our own breakthrough. Because trust is the same as faith. Like George was saying, you can say it, faith. Trust, faith. And if you're not trusting in God, if you don't have the faith, um, faith, for, uh, uh, the faith of God in you, what you have is fear. Because the opposite of faith is not doubt, but it's fear. Fear is the opposite of faith. Fear can stir us up, can stir up uncertainty, make us feel like we are drifting, you know, like, does he, is his promise? Yes. Is his promise? No. What if I do it and his promise doesn't come to pass, you know, when it comes to God promises. So this, what happened is it widened the gap in our trust and why it, it widened the gap. It shift our focus from, from his, from God's kingdom, from his kingdom. And then the in incredible blessing that were already made available to us. So without trust, without trust, you cannot walk in a super, supernatural life. Right? Let's read Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 to 39. All right. Hebrews 10, 38 to 39, again, in the Amplified Classic. But the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction, respecting man's relationship to God, and divine things and holy fervor born of faith and conjoined with it mm -hmm. and if he draws back and shrinks in fear my soul has no delight or pleasure in him but our way is not that of those who draw back to eternal misery perdition and are utterly destroyed but we are of those who believe who cleave to and trust in and rely on God through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and by faith, preserve the soul. Now, you might say, okay, Sabrina, now, you know, uh, if I'm having trouble, you know, with my faith, again, like we said, um, fear not, no pun intended here, but fear not, but pray instead. Yes, pray, speak to God who will give you strength to trust in him. I mean, how amazing is God? You, you don't have enough faith. You don't know how to do it. You're fearful. You pray and he will take away that fear and he will replace it. He will encourage you. He will strengthen you when you're weak to, to have that trust in him and the peace of mind. Because fear plays with your mind. The peace of mind to focus on him. Now this response will help us build confidence 
in what we hope for and give us the assurance about the things we can't yet see. Let's read to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Do not fret, that means fear, or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours, that tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ. And so fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot of whatever sort that is, that peace, which transcends all understanding, shall garrison and mount guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So how awesome is that, right? And, and you know, we have so many examples, I mean, really good example in the Bible, awesome example in the Bible. And and, and uh, I think today we're just going to take two because we can't really go through all of it. We're going to take the examples of Sarah and Jairus, right? Now, take Sarah's, um, Abraham's wife, for example, in Hebrews 11, 11. Can you read it? He Hebrews 11, 11. Because of faith, also Sarah herself received physical power to conceive a child even when she was long past the age for it, because she considered God who had given her the promise to be reliable and trustworthy and true to his word. See, we see in Sarah's story, we learn that trust isn't about our circumstances. It's not about what our circumstances say about us, but about what God says and what his kingdom confirms. Again, I'll say that. It's not about what our circumstances says about us or what we can see, but about what God says, which is his word, and what his kingdom confirms, which is the manifestation of his word over our situation. See, God promised Sarah she would have a child, and that's what's manifested in her life. She didn't look at her age. She didn't, I mean, she didn't, um, she like we read in the in the word, because of her faith, she had faith despite her age. She she had faith, even though when if we read the um um the Bible, we know that um Abraham was like yes Lord, but you know and it was yes Lord until Lot wasn't there. Do you know what I'm trying to say? When there was no other solution, so if Sarah doesn't get get a child before there might be Lot as the um, you know as a replacement, but there's nothing. So right now, uh, then she had nothing. And we, we, I'm not counting, of course, the servant's kid. But this is about the promise that God gave her. So even in our circumstances, sometimes we need to remember that we are running a, our race with God. So it's not about what God's done or the way that God um, answered the prayer for someone else that we need to stand on. But we need to trust in God and stand on his promise that he has given us. And like the verb says, no matter how that pans out, right? Now let's look at uh, Jairus. Let's read uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 49 to 51, and then 54 to 55. All right, Luke 8, 49 to 51. While he was still speaking, a man from the house of the director of the synagogue came and said to Jairus, your daughter is dead. Do not weary and trouble the teacher any further. But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, Do not be seized with alarm or struck with fear. Simply believe in me as able to do this, and she shall be made well. And when he came to the house, he permitted no one to enter with him except Peter and John and James and the girl's father and mother. Now let's read uh, 54 to 55. All right, verse 54 to 55. And grasping her hand, he called, saying, child arise from the sleep of death and her spirit returned from death and she arose immediately and he directed that she should be given something to eat now this story reminds us no matter what we hear or see i mean he came in the house he saw that the daughter is dead right um before he came and see it he heard it like all your senses right now is tingling right you're you're hearing you're seeing 
is is um, is telling you that is, this is a very wrong situation. And most of the time, the next thing that we usually do is this: we go by what we see and what we hear, and our mouth, when it's open, reflect what we have accepted with our seeing and our hearing, and we start saying bad thing. But no, not Jairus. Jairus chose to trust, so we can choose to trust in Jesus just like Jairus did. Even when he was told that his daughter had died, he hadn't let he didn't let that shake his faith. When he found her lifeless at home, he still held held on his belief in Jesus. Why why do I say that? Because in verse fifty five, the last one we um, before uh, before the last one we read, we see that the um, the girl came back to life. But also we also see if you look a verse before that that every um, when Jesus. Um, uh, how to say, didn't allow everybody else to be in, in the room with him. He still allowed the father to be there, Jairus to be there. That shows that Jairus was, had, uh, um, um, had trust in, in Jesus, despite what he saw and what he heard. So again, we saw in verse 55, we see that the girl came back to life. This shows us that when we trust in, in the Lord, we will never be let down. We will never be let down. We will not um, be let down because his word is yes and amen, isn't it? Now let's look at Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 11. Romans 10, verse 11 in the Amplified Classic. Again, we like to use Amplified Classic for studies. The reason why we do that, I've said that before, is because when you're reading the word for you, for just for reading, those other versions like New King James, uh, New Living Translation, whatever other versus uh, uh, translations you want to use. They're good for reading. They're good for um, devotions. But if you want to do a study, the Amplified, Amplified Classic, those sort of versions are detailed. more in detail. So it explains in a more detailed version what the original words were talking about. Because remember, the Old Testament was Aramaic, the New Testament was Greek. And especially the Aramaic, the Jewish language, the Hebrew language is very detailed. So sometimes uh, a lot of the, the translation into English needs to be a little bit more broad, and especially if you're looking in terms of a study. So keep that in mind as I read Romans 10 verse 11. The scripture says, No man who believes in him, who adheres to, relies on, and trusts in him will ever be put to shame or be disappointed. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Let us give you guys a testimony of uh, of trust right from ourselves last week when we were preparing to do the boost um yeah you want to say uh yeah just just when we were preparing setting up uh for the boost program and setting up the computers connecting the cord uh when i mean the cord as in the the internet cable because you don't want to be doing these these uh programs online through wi-fi it's better to do it through cable so you don't get any issues uh, and when I tested the internet speed, it was really bad. When I mean really bad, it was below 100 Mbps. Now, for those nerds out there like me who understand about that, for a, a live sh uh, video feed on Facebook or YouTube, for it not for you to be able to see it properly, no lagging, no buffering or anything, you need well, well above, I would say, minimum of 100. We were well below that, 60. 70 i tested it the third time 40. i was panicking a little and sabrina i remember my wife just said you know trust god just do it don't worry about it don't panic let's just do the program and see what god does and we've done the whole program and none of you complained nobody said anything about the internet service so everything's fine it was a supernatural thing sometimes we what we see with our physical flesh does not mean that that's what's really going on that's yes, right. God can do things in the background. God can heal, uh, as I heard before, through Bobby Connor and other ministers. God can heal a, a, a little girl's ear who's born deformed with no hole, and he can heal her. Mm -hmm. And she starts hearing, yet the ear is still like that. And there's still no hole. Blocked. How is that possible? Still, still blocked. blocked. Yet Physically. she can hear now. God can do whatever, whatever he wants to do. He's God. So we must have trust we must have faith that what he says will come to pass because that's how the supernatural work it starts with trust first right see as d martin lloyd jones stated miracles are not meant to be understood 
That's why I like George saying, they are meant to be believed. Amen. Amen. Number two is what? Expectation or hope. Yes. Expectation. See, when we trust, we expect. See, if you don't have, if you don't have, um, if you don't have trust, you can't expect, right? You know, when, um, for those moms out there and the ladies, right? If you, if faith is the things hoped, hoped for, for, hoped for. Mm. Okay. I'll, I'll skip that because we have a lot of things. I was going to give an example, but that's all right. So when we trust, we expect expectation is what brings all of it together. We are not expecting from ourselves because we are not trusting on ourselves, right? But from God, now God is not a liar. That is not his nature. Let's read Numbers chap um, chapter, no wait, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should tell or act a lie, neither the son of man that he should feel repentance or compunction for what he has promised. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Wow. No. See, th that on the contrary, is the nature of the enemy. The enemy is a liar. Satan is a liar. Let's keep reading. Look at uh, John chapter 8, verse 44. All right. John 8, 44. We're talking you, about Satan. Sorry. You are of your father, the devil, and it is your will to practice the lusts and gratify the desires which are characteristic of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a falsehood, he speaks what is natural to him. For he is a liar himself and a father of lies and of all that is false. Wow. Biblical foundation, biblical truth. If you understand those two, you will go very far in your relationship with God because you will not keep going through the guessing game, right? Now, understanding this biblical truth is, is very exciting. Personally, I find so much hope in knowing that I can absolutely trust his word to be yes and amen. See, when I see that his word offers an open book, like we call, we said last week, an open book of, of solutions for my worries, it motivates me. It should motivate anybody to actively work with God, like we said last week, and look forward to the amazing outcomes he has in store for us. Why? Because he's not a man that he should lie. He's not a liar. So we need, we need to sometimes come to basic and recognize, whoa, what is the character of God? I know I'm, we keep, I keep hearing people say, trust in his word, trust in his word, trust in his word. All right, I'll trust in his word. But, but it's as simple as a reflection of who we are and how we are living. For example, my husband said to me, oh, you know what? Um, I'm going to give you this food this week, right? I trust he's going to do it. No matter what happened, he's going to go and do it because I know him. I know him when it comes to those things in his character, he will do what he said. And when I understand that, when he said, I'll give it to you this week, I don't have a second thought, do I? No, because my, I, I don't have a second thought because I trust he will do that. And when we understand that, the expectation that builds in us, right? Bring forth breakthrough because... We are trusting, knowing his character, that he is not a liar. See, as the saying goes, whose report would you believe? What? Whose report would you believe? Certainly not the liar. But our God's report, who has showed himself faithful to us. Why do I say that certainly, certainly not a liar? I mean, amazing, guys. Think about it. The enemy is a liar. So he comes to you and says, oh, you're trusting in God. You're not going to get healed. But then when you realize that God is not a liar and his word says that I have healed you, you're healed already by my strap, you're healed. Who, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe what you see, how you're feeling right now? I'm not saying you deny that you're going through it like we've said it before, but you need to understand that the supernatural life, you have to have trust in God. When you're filled with expectation then, when you understand that and you're filled with expectation, you don't rely on your own timing either. Because you're not focusing on the, on the time. Oh, it's been, it's been three months. Where's my healing? I mean, I remember we gave testimony when I was not well. And how God healed me supernaturally. And, you know, I didn't just go through that. 
a month, two months, three months, right? I went through that a couple of months, remember, babe? Um, a couple of months. And we couldn't rely on our own timing. We were praying for people who were sick and they were getting healed. And yet we were still waiting for me to be healed. But I trust and I had expectation that this is not my portion. He said I'm healed, right? So you don't rely, we don't rely on our own timing or what our eyes um, can see. Instead, we stay focused and trust that even if um, seem, uh, things seems to be taking longer than we hope for, God is never late. Why? His timing is perfect. Expecting from God means having confidence in his perfect timing. We will give you one example from the Bible and some of our testimonies. Um, we'll give you the example of David and Goliath, right? In the well-known story of David and Goliath from uh, 1 Samuel um, chapter 17, we get a clear account of the encounter. But what I like, uh, what I'm going to talk about is this. Before the battle even begins, right? David and Goliath have a conversation that highlights David's unwavering sense of expectation. And David, you can see there that David's words shows his confidence and the victory he expects in this battle. Let's read from 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 17, verse 46. Want to read it? 1 Samuel 17, 46. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will smite you and cut off your head, and I will give the corpses of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Whoa. Now, we all know how the story ends. He wins. In the same manner, we, we are called to live with bold expectation in our own lives, confident that we have God's support. His words never fails. And our expectation is the key. Listen to that. Our expectation is a key that opens the door to seeing his promise come to life. Not Listen very carefully. We know what his promise is, but we need it to come to life to experience it, right? Expectation is the key. Now let's, um, let us share some of our own testimonies. I'll start the first one. All right. <laughs> the first one is about a car. Well, we try to, to, to give um, from different subjects, right? The first one is a, is a car, um, our car. Basically, with our car, I remember that uh, we had an issue with it. It broke down and um, living by faith. So it's not like we're going to be able to get um, a loan or any of those things, right? We had no other way to get a car, right? And, um, and, I, and I took that to God and I said, Lord, you know, we've got free kids. God, you understand. We have free kids and we have to do grocery shopping and all those things. I, I still remember. Do you remember? putting all three kids in that trolley and then um, walking for over half an hour to get some grocery. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> um, anyway, we prayed. We asked God, what would you like us to do? Because God is a God of solution. Remember, I said it, open book solution, right? So we're like, okay, Lord, what would you like us to do? And uh, God gave me a verse and said, I want you to wait. I will give you the car. Now, um, that went on for how many months? Three months, yeah? Three months. Yeah. So in that three months, every two weeks, God will give me a scripture to, to tell me, wait, wait. And, 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 and in that waiting, God, would, God, God, um, God was talk to, talking to us. And, you know, my husband was like, my wife is crazy. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what, would you, um, what, um, what do you want me to do? He's, he's like, I want you to expect that I'm going to give you the car. Right. I want you to not only just expect, but visualize it. What kind of car would you like? So I looked at my husband. I said, baby, I'm praying. I'm expecting a car with hard leather. We have three kids and I want the roof thingy up. Um, how do you call it? Babe? Sunroof. Sunroof open. Right. Yes, I know. What did you think of it when I said that? <laughs> he saw that was crazy, but that's all right. And um, of course. So we kept praying. Oh, on the third month, I was like, Lord, we need that car now. And hey, praise God. We actually sowed a seed before into some student's life. Um, and uh, they came to visit us on that day. Anyway, I'm cutting the story short because we have more example to give. And on that day, they gave us a big lump sum. Right. And guess what? We got the car that we, I said we would get. And in the way and the manner and the hot leather I wanted. 
but we had I had to have expectation even without seeing it. Is even 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 without like I had expectation without even knowing how much cars cost. I just know that this is what I want. This is what my God said that I'm gonna get it, and He told me to expect, to visualize it, to thank Him, and I got it. Um, do you wanna give one and then I give one? Won't cover all of them. Yeah, but, uh, I'll give one. I'll give the car. This is much more supernatural. The car translocation, translocation. Oh yeah. Uh, all right. We got invited to go and preach in a church in, in the, the city. In the yeah. city, we were preaching in this um, church. We preached there quite a few times over the years, and I somehow we somehow got lost on the way. It wasn't our first time preaching there, but somehow we just got lost. And I remember we were, I can't remember the area, but when we checked our phone, we were way off. We were at least an hour and a half, close to an hour and a half away um, from the church itself. And we thought, oh my Lord, we're going to be very late. This is not good at all. Guess what? And my wife said, don't worry, we're going to be fine. I remember you said something along those lines. And we quickly, she quickly got the kids together at the time. They were much smaller than they are now. So they got together and we started praying in tongues. And as I drove, by the time I got to the church, I didn't look at, the, I didn't want to look at the time. By the time I, all my phone, by the way, because the minister where we were ministering, we went to Bible college together. So I was thinking, oh, my Lord's going to send me all these messages. I can't even look at the messages. I need to get there now. I can't look. Um, but no, we got there two minutes before. <laughs> now we were easily like i said an hour uh, close to an hour and a half away we got there two minutes before that's impossible it took us like 15 20 minutes to get there it's and crazy. it wasn't once it it's happened to us at least two or three times yeah we, we can't give all the testimony i'll give another one for the ladies out there all right um uh, you all know i have three kids I, I think you all thought all three of them once in a while come online right now they're all they're all a gift from God because I couldn't have kids right uh, before and then God supernatural. I mean, just the way I God told me I had, um, that I'm pregnant is supernatural. They we have a lot of testimony. We can we could write a big book of the, the, the testimony. But I want to give the one about Natanya, my my um, second one. Um, I w um, being pregnant. I was one week over. One week over. One week. Yeah, one week over. And for ladies out there, you know, I'm I'm over it, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was over it. I'm like, come already, <laughs> you know, and I'm praying and I'm like, Lord, um, and, um, my kids tend to be quite big for my, for, for me. <laughs> um, um, and I was like, Lord, I cannot take it anymore. I can't even go to church. I couldn't even get out of bed properly. And I remember finished praying. And that night I had a dream in that dream. There was three people who came and uh, prayed for me and I didn't go to church that day. And that the next day was a Sunday and three people came to our house that day to see how we were just to, you know, see how we were. Anyway, long story short, I felt like God suddenly said, you know what, just get in the car, go to the, go to the hospital. Now, mind you, I was not in labor by any means. Like there's no suffering, nothing, <laughs> no, no contraction, nothing, not in labor point. <laughs> period not in labor so we went there we went to the hospital and you know we like to to the nurses listen it's been over a week i i, I can't take it yeah but by the time we got there you started getting pain so you started getting contractions but the contractions were still very far apart yes they were not close enough so they, they, they are, I yes remember. yeah i remember that and uh, that was in what's that uh, Caulfield, yeah Caulfield. that's it Caulfield, yeah. hospital in melbourne and then they said look you can stay here a little bit, uh, but if the contractions don't start getting closer, we're going to have to send you home. Mm. Can't stay longer. So I can't remember exactly if it was an, half an hour to an hour we were there and they end up coming back. No, it was an hour. So basically what happened is this. So they were saying that, like George said, if you do not, um, if you, if, if we don't see it happening, you're going to go home. And I remember, you know, the boldness of expectation that this baby going to come out on that day and have to come out was this. I looked at him and I said, you know what? Come back in exactly one hour. Remember I said that come back in an hour. I'm going to give birth in an hour. They looked at me like I was nuts. Right, because it was it, it, for them to tell me, you know, go home and then come back later on because it wasn't happening the way it's supposed to be. Right, 
So anyway, we prayed and uh, what, what happened? Uh, one hour, one hour they, they came, came back. They came back and, and, and you were starting to... That was my quickest giving birth from yeah. all my three kids. <laughs> Anyway, we have a lot, but we because of time, we can't go ahead with it. We're going to keep going, right? So, um, oh, that was another example we had. Anyway, I like the, this quote by Charles Sturt. It says this, real Christians reveal, reveal, sorry, real Christians reveal in desperate ventures for Christ, expecting from God great things and attempting the same with exhilaration number three god's word Ooh. the word of god shows us everything that's available to us it's our guide our manual and our standard for living his word help us to understand how god's work and his way as we see in 2 timothy chapter 3 verse 16 to 17 you want to read it 2 timothy 3 16 to 17 in the complete Jewish Bible translation. All scripture is God breathed and is valuable for teaching the truth, convicting of sin, correcting faults and training in right living. Thus, anyone who belongs to God may be fully equipped for every good work. Wow, this is what I meant by, let's read um, Job chapter 22, verse 28. Job twenty-two twenty-eight. this time Amplified Classic. It shall also decide and decree a thing, and it shall be established for you. And the light of God's favor shall shine upon your ways. Wonderful. Now, we've understood that we have to trust God. We have to expect. But what are you going to expect on? You're going to have to expect on what his word is saying for, for you and the situation. How do we deal with it? We decree it like we've just read in Job. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to give you biblical verses according to various situations. While we declare these words, receive it as prophecy unto what you need. Now, this is the key Jesus gave us as we speak it out. We are loosening and activating our breakthrough. Read, um, read it from uh, ch uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Matthew 16, 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven and whatever you loose declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. I love it when it says must be. There is no other no other way. Must be. So we're going to give you guys some um, examples of course. It's not example for everything because we don't have that the time, but it is a practical way of how you also can expect, trust God on his word, decree his word and expect to see um, it manifest in our lives, right? For healing, you want to read it? All right, for healing, Isaiah 53 verse 5, reading New King James Version. But he who was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our inequities, the chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And the prayer would be, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we decree that we are healed, whole, and walking in supernatural divine health in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It's not complicated. It's just a matter of trust. Um, for marriage, if so if you're looking for someone, um, read it, Genesis. Genesis 2, verse 18, New King James Version. And the Lord God said, It is not good that a man should be alone i will make him a helper comparable to him right so the prayer would be like this father in the name of jesus we ask that you would supernaturally connect us or connect me whoever it is uh, with our helper who is just right for for me in the mighty name of jesus amen amen and for marriages breakthrough um can matthew you read 19 matthew 19 verse 6 so then they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man separate. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare restoration over our marriage. No weapon fought against our marriage shall prosper. Lord, we pray for the wonderful communion of, of the Holy Spirit to help us see each other through your eyes, loving and respecting one another with faithfulness. We declare that our home is set in the right order where all things have passed away and everything in our marriage has become new, growing toward you more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
Uh, next one for education. James 1 verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask for your wisdom to help us follow your words so that we can bring glory to you. We decree that we are the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. For finances. Philippians 4 verse 19. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that we are abundantly successful in everything we do. We trust that you, Lord God, teach us how to prosper and guide us in the right direction. We are fully supplied with, e with every need met because we have your favor. Your will is being done in our lives and in our children's life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to do for identity. Romans 5 verse 17. For if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree that we are reigning in life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Uh, we continue on our identity. Number two. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree that we are walking by faith and not by sight in the mighty name of Jesus. See how easy and simple it is? Um, number three, it's still on identity. 2 Corinthians 5 21, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Number three. I mean, number four or five now. I've lost it. <laughs> it's a lot in identity. Yes, Ephesians, because it's important. Ephesians 3, <laughs> verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Father, in the name of Jesus, we decree that we are rooted and grounded in love because Christ dwells in us. Amen. And we're going to do one for favor. Psalm 84 verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be withho withhold. Will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. And prayer. In the name of Jesus, we are the righteousness of God. Therefore, we are qualified to covenant kindness and covenant favor. The favor of God is among the righteous. The favor of God surrounds the righteous. Therefore, it surrounds us everywhere we go and in everything we do. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now, these are just a few examples, as mentioned before. If you have other needs I haven't mentioned, check what God's word says about your situation. Then he speak his promise. His promises over it and see the difference it makes. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Let me end with this quote by Vance Havner. The Christian life itself is a miracle, and every phase of it ought to be ought to bear the mark of the supernatural. Amen. Amen. I hope you guys enjoyed Amen. it. Amen. All right, Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you for what we have studied today. We pray that you continue to unravel understanding wisdom in your word and that you continue to take us deeper in your word, Lord, deeper in our relationship with you, in hunger and thirst for your ways. If you're new here today, yes, this is not a coincidence. This is a divine appointment. God's word is very clear. 1 John 5, 4 to 5 tells us, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Where are you putting your faith? I'm, I, I want to ask you. Some put it in money, things, other people, idols, whatever it is. Where are you putting your faith? The word of God goes on to say, Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. John 3, 16 to 17, goes on to say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, talking about Jesus Christ himself, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through that the world through him might be saved. So you're probably wondering, what do I have to do? Well, first of all, you need to acknowledge 
that you need God. In 1 John 1 verse 9, tells us, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Oh, here you go again. Oh, I'm good enough, George. Well, good enough compared to who? To your mom, to your brother, to your cousin, to your neighbor. You're not good enough compared to God. God is the measurement. God is the ultimate measurement, standard, we me standard that we should be looking at. And the reality is, in his eyes, we've all fallen short. We all deserve death. We all deserve hell. But because of what Jesus did, his free gift, which cost him dearly, of salvation is available to you. You just need to realize and understand that sin, in its most simplistic definition, is when we try to live our lives without God. You were not created to live without him. We were all created in his image. And out, and out of all the creation in the world, humanity is the only creation that God created in his own image. Now, our God is God. What does that mean? He's divine. He's a spirit being. Therefore, we are spirit beings like him because we are made in his image. We're not human beings as such. We are spirit beings with a body and a soul. And as spirit beings made in his image, we need to walk to live righteously just like he does. How can we do that? It's impossible, George. You're right. It is on our own efforts, on our own conviction, of course. But when we do it in him, when we put our trust, our lives in and our faith in what Jesus did, we put our faith in his finished work. Then in the eyes of God, you become righteous. You become his son, his daughter once again. So what do I need to do? Okay, listen and look at this on the screen. Romans 10 verses 9 to 10 is very clear. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness and with a mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you speak out loud where you are right now and mean it. It has to come from the heart. The heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. So it has to come. You have to mean it. If you're in the bathroom, if you're in the kitchen, if you're in your car, if you're in your workplace, don't worry about what people are saying. Don't worry about those around you. Call out to God right now. You don't know how much time you have left. That's the reality. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but we don't know. We just don't know. Call out to him now with the uh, 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 spoken voice like I'm speaking to you right now. And say, Lord, in, in, in a simple prayer that comes from the heart, right now, Jesus, I want to make you my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Take away all my sins. Wash me clean. I choose to believe. Because remember, belief, faith comes first with a choice. I choose to believe that God raised you from the dead. And from this day forward, I thank you that I am saved and that I belong to you. You are my Lord and Savior. Use my life for your glory. It's a simple prayer like that. And the beauty is it doesn't stop there. If Titus 3 verse 5, Ephesians 2 verse 8, Acts 1 verse 8, amongst others, goes on to tell us, then he saves us. And what happens then? Well, he saves us by grace through faith, the gift of God washing away our sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling spirit. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere what does that mean that's called the baptism of holy spirit and fire so once you've prayed that prayer invited jesus to be your lord and savior believe that god's raised him from the dead you are saved now we're going to pray for the baptism of holy spirit that means that G that the spirit of god himself will come and then he will live inside of you that's the joy of the indwelling holy spirit he will live inside of you and he comes bearing gifts spiritual weapons that he's going to teach you that is going to correct you, that is going to comfort you, that is going to guide you through life on how to use those weapons in life as well. Because there is a war for the souls of humanity between evil and good. And guess what? That war has already been won. We've won. Amen. And But the, re, the, the only way that you can manifest that victory in your life is by giving your life to Jesus right now and then believing and trusting in him every single day. Are you ready? Let's do it together. Lord, I thank you right now for my brother, for my sister, for this wonderful decision that they just made. And Lord, we are hungry. We are thirsty. So we call out to you right now. Holy Spirit, come. Baptize us with your presence. Fill us afresh from head to toe.
inside and out. Come with fire, Lord. As your word says, our God is a consuming fire. Lord, come. Light up a fire. Ignite a fire in us that cannot be quenched. Revival fire, Lord. And use us for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This brings us to the second part of our program, which is called the collective, where we spend time praying, prophesying, whatever Holy Spirit leads us to do. I encourage you, if you have specific prayer requests, as always, write them down on the Facebook live chat section so that we can get onto them. If you're new here, hang around. We'd love to get to know you. Drop a line. Tell us where you're from. If you've been blessed, if you gave your life to Jesus, and, or if you just need some help, wherever you may be in the world, you need help finding a church. Maybe you live in a place where you cannot go in person to a church. We can always do our best to help you. So send us an email or drop us a line here on Facebook Messenger and we'll do our best to guide you in the right direction. Amen. 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 This brings us to the collective.